What's up, everybody? It's your boy, Stevie the Black. That's S-T-E-B-E-E, -E, the Black. I'm back, and I'm here to give you another SmackDown Live review today. So, yesterday I said that Monday Night Raw was pretty good. I said that SmackDown Live had to do something to top it, to keep its reign over its big brother, Raw, uh, going. So, did it do that? Let's break it down and find out. So, we kick off SmackDown Live with a match between Kane and Bray Wyatt. Obviously, every time Kane and Bray Wyatt fight, I'm going to think that Bray Wyatt's going to win. Because that's what happened every single time they fight. Except this time. And except that backlash. And it's funny because Randy Orton's doing all these things and a lot of people don't agree with it. But I kind of do. Because really, if you think about it, Randy Orton is in that role of Bray Wyatt where he's keeping interrupting and costing him matches. And, Rand and Bray Wyatt is sort of the guy who's trying to get a win, get some momentum, but he can't because he keeps getting distracted. Now, it's not like in this case where, you know, he gets hit with a chokeslam and loses. He, he just walks out of the ring and gets counted out. So Kane is still the winner, but he goes in the back to find him. As he goes in the back to find him, he uh, gets trapped in this metal case or garage or something like that. And he's trying to get out, but he can't. And then all of a sudden, we see this dark figure or whatever. He's talking to her. And then, you know, the whole... Randy Orton comes in to check. Bray Wyatt's gone. He's upset. I'm interested to see what this goes. I have a feeling that Randy Orton will lose this match. Just because of the way the role he's taking. But this is WWE. And, you know, Randy Orton hasn't gotten a win. A big win in a while. But Bray Wyatt also needs the win. So, you know... We'll see where it goes, but as a whole thing, I'm going to give it a C because I thought it was okay. And it's including the match in this as well because the storyline is a B. I, I think it's good, but as for the whole of it, I, I, I give it a C. All right, so next we had Nikki versus uh, Alexa Bliss. And that match was like two minutes because... Carmella uh, got in Nikki's head or something like that. Because she was on commentary. She said something to her. I can't remember what she said. So she threw Alexa into her. Got back in the ring. Obviously, you know what happens after that. Carmella gets upset. Gets in the ring. Starts beating down Nikki. Her and Alexa. Uh, what's her name comes down? Uh, uh, what's her name? What's her name? What? Guys, what's her name? Becky Lynch. Thank you. Becky Lynch comes down for the save. Obviously, they pull a Teddy... Long move, and we have a tag team match, and the heels win. And not only the heels win, but Alexa pins the champion Becky Lynch. So I'm I'm going with Becky retaining this Sunday, but I guess it just kind of does that whole uh oh Alexa's got her number. This could be a ch title change here. So next, I gave it a C. Next, uh, but I will say though, I'm tired of seeing women tag team matches on SmackDown Live. I really am. But then again, the only SmackDown, the only women's stuff on Raw is is Charlotte, Dana Brooke, uh, Alexa Bliss, not Alexa, Charlotte, Dana Brooke, Bailey, and Sasha Banks. I mean, and but those four make it work. It feels like the SmackDown Live women are like, it gets tiring, but their stuff is exciting. They're not putting on matches like they're putting on, so. Next, we had the Hype Bros taking on the Vaude Villains. Hype Bros won after the match. The, uh, the Ascension came out. So expect to have a pre-show match probably for uh, No Mercy. I got nothing else to say. So I gave it a C. Sorry for the moving around a lot. Ugh, I don't know what's up. Next we had, which I think was the best part of the whole entire show. Miz TV with the dog fomentary. Basically Miz highlighting all of uh, Dolph's highs but mostly lows. Excuse me. And uh, I thought it was great. And what made it even better was he brought the Spirit Squad out. And I'm like, the Spirit Squad? That just takes me back to the DX moments with them and how Vince would use them and how they all became tag team champions and stuff like that. It takes me back. So I, I enjoyed it. It was just <sighs> Nikki. No, not Nikki. I'm sorry. That's Dolph. Mikey and Kenny, I believe. Man, those dudes look. Oh, Dolph looks way better than them. So don't take that the wrong way. I'm not. I'm not gay or anything like that just i just thought Dolph looks better to know but not in that way don't judge me i give it a though 
Anyway, they beat down Dolph to his old friends. He kicks him with some super kicks and tries to get the Miz, but Miz escapes. Man, it may, that Dolph documentary, the documentary they did, it really feels like Dolph Ziggler's leaving. And I don't want him to leave, man. I want Dolph Ziggler to stay. I want him to be the guy we know he can be. Maybe he's just done with wrestling or what. I don't know, but I really hope he wins Sunday. I really do. Heck, he could lose it back to the Miz. I don't care as long as he keeps his career. Next, we had Jason Jordan, Double J, taking on Jay Uso. Uso uh, dominated being, uh, part of the match. I said before every week that I love what the Usos are doing. I love their heel turn. It's great. I, I just can't get enough of it, you know? I would love to see this heel team against the New Day and stuff like that. So, I just, that's why I find it interesting. But, um, the whole thing, I gave it to see... The Usos were beating down American Alpha. He Heath and Rhino came out for the save, building tension, and uh, for their match at No Mercy, another match I am looking forward to. Next, we get to the low of the night, which is uh, Jack Swagger taking on Baron Corbin. Obviously, you know every time Baron Corbin's in a match, he's going to control it as he did. But the difference here is Swagger had in the ankle lock, and I th and Baron Corbin was trying to go for the rope, but he was like this. And for whatever reason, the ref thought he was tapping, so he rung the bell. Obviously, it was to keep them both looking strong. They'll probably have a match at No Mercy where Baron Corbin will win that one. But it's like, that ref should be fired. Like, if he thought that was a tap. I know he's seen people go like this before. How was going like this a tap? Like, that doesn't make any sense. And he plus, you know, look, kind of like looks swagger, looks stupid. But it is what it is. So that one was unfortunately a D. And finally, we had Cena, Ambrose, and Styles face to face to face. Another A, a fact that AJ came out, talked about how he's champ, how he's going to retain. Dean Ambrose came about how he was going to win until Cena got involved. And Cena came out, and neither Ambrose or Styles let him get a word in. And when he did say a word, he said, talk is cheap, and beat him. And uh, the fighting started. So obviously, I thought that segment was good. It's good to see Dean Ambrose back to the way it was. Dean Ambrose's character. Is kind of like Stone Cold Steve Austin's character. See, Randy Orton, you would think he was that way too, except Randy Orton's a clearly a face. But with Stone Cold Steve Austin and Dean Ambrose's character, it's uh, I don't care who you are, you could be a face, you could be a heel, but I'll take you out, and I don't care what you say about it. That's who Dean Ambrose is. Dean Ambrose isn't a, a a face; he's a tweener, and I love that about him. And that's why he's a lunatic. For obviously, when he was chasing after uh Seth, not yeah, Seth Rollins. I guess you could say he was a face in that situation, but his character works better when he's a tweener, and, you know, it just works better that way. I'm sorry. Anyway, but, uh, obviously, Cena hits the AA on Ambrose, Styles hits the, uh, the phenomenal forearm on him, and Dean hits, uh, Styles with the Dirty Deeds, with Ambrose standing tall to end SmackDown Live. Um... A, I'm looking forward to No Mercy. Did it live up to the hype though? Was SmackDown Live better than Raw? Oh, I thought about it. I thought about it a lot. And I have to say slightly. Like if Raw was a 10, a scale of 1 to 10. If Raw was a 9, SmackDown to me. Okay, okay Raw was an 8. SmackDown to me was a... 8.1 because it was just a little bit better with the point where you couldn't tell and I, people say it's because of that third hour Ross always had third hours and people always ignored Smackdown now that we have Smackdown we have to pay attention to it because it's been good it's like Smackdown Live is just been better but is it because of the third hour I don't know I personally always like Raw having third hours three hours I thought it was cool I thought I would always look forward to a special events with Raw because then Raw would be three hours but, I mean, now it's at the point where it's like, maybe they don't need it. My opinion, personally, I, I like to keep it. I know Triple H wants to get to go back to our, but uh, we'll see where it goes from here. But looking forward to No Mercy. Come back Friday for the pay-per-view predictions video. And I will see you then. And if you're not down with that, I've just got two words for you. Peace out.